Okay, uh, greetings and salutations. So this is my friend. Do you have any stage name? Do you want to go? I go by. I will just go by Paul because it's my name. Okay. So how are you doing, Paul? Um, first off, bef I'm gonna pro I'm gonna post this on my YouTube channel and elsewhere. So do you give me consent to record you? I give you total consent to record this. Okay. Cool. Um, is there anything, is there anything you want to talk about on this podcast show or whatever you want to call it? Well, I have thought of a few things to talk about, but I will uh, let you be the host and uh, come up with some ideas because uh, you're more imaginative than me, presumably you have more uh, experience on camera. Okay. Um, uh, how was your blood draw, by the way? Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I had a blood test this morning. Um, I went there. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, I get a little frightened, um, you know, afterwards because it, I, I, I read that they, the, the, the puncture heals up quickly. Um, but they, they did stick a needle into my vein, the phlebotomist, obviously to, to, do, to draw the blood. And, uh, you know, they put like a little cotton and like a piece of tape over it. But I'm like, I, I, I wonder how long before I'm able to go to the coffee shop or go to the gym and, then also, um, then also, um, you know, I was washing my hands to take off the band-aid so the water mixed with the soap, you know, got I into- I think we've all had this experience. Uh, every time I get punctured by one of those phlebotomists, it seems to last forever and give me a massive bruise. I, I hear from everyone else, there's not usually that bad, but whenever they do it to me, it, it's usually the worst. From what I've been told, when a doctor does the blood draw, it's usually worse because they have less experience than the phlebotomist, so don't let the doctor do it to you. Uh, how, how often have you had these done, these blood draws? I, it will, when I, 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 get, I get it like every six months or so, because uh, I'm on a lot of yeah. psychiatric medication. I know years ago I was on like, you know, medication that required lots of tests like lithium and uh, I think another one was uh, Depakote. But lately, I'm off the lithium, so the tests don't need to be as frequent. Uh, you know, one of the things that Invega does is raise prolactin significantly. Uh, so that I, I got to constantly test prolactin. And um, these are some of the things I got to test. These are some pretty obscure names even for me who studied biology. Uh, have you looked up all of these uh, weird words like prolactin and figured out what they mean? Or like how, how curious has your condition made you about these things? I think prolactin has to do with pituitary. It affects, um, you know, a lot of, you know, sexual function issues, uh, which uh, is... From the name, I'm guessing it has something to do with producing milk because it's got like lact in it, like um, lactose. I don't know, but okay. all I know is in Vega, you know, the antipsychotic I'm on, you know, it causes really elevated prolactin. That's one of the major problems with it, so... I would have thought that if you have blood draws every six months or so, you would have been used to it by now. But then again, uh, it's always unpleasant. Uh, it's been years since the last time I had a blood test. I always put blood tests off. I hope I never get anything serious because, as I said, every time I've had it done, it's been worse than I expected it to be. I always expect that, oh, my last experience was a one-off fluke and I just had a really bad nurse. Next time it'll heal just like that, like everyone else, uh, everyone else's blood draws apparently do, but no, it doesn't. And I always, I always get paranoid that I'm gonna get air bubbles in my blood. I don't wanna give you some new fear to right. uh, have in your head. But I watched this horror movie when I was a kid, which I should not have done, uh, where some people, you, you know about the bends, when people are in a submarine and they quick, or diving and they quickly rise to the surface, it can put like bubbles in your blood. Uh, so this happened to someone in a horror movie I watched and it looks really gross. And I have been just terrified of getting bubbles in my blood ever since. Uh, and I know there is like a 0% chance of this happening. Well, it's not quite zero. That's the scary part. It's, it's always hard to tell if you're paranoid or whether you're rightly worried and everyone else is the freak because they're not afraid of this thing that could kill them. Uh, do you get that feeling? Right. I, I think, uh, I think, um, you know, to you, to, you describe, I mean, obviously my, my fear is in air bubbles and hearing you describe it, it sounds very uh, unrealistic. It doesn't sound like, I mean, I I, I'm, I'm sure there are some really obscure cases, but for all intents and purposes, I don't think there's 
lots of people that are, that are having that problem. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing that the things you fear, which are different from Airbnb, right? I, I, I feel, I feel like beer, yeah, just as rare. But uh, to to you, everyone else's fear seems weird, but your own seems really strong, and the same is with me right like, you, you know, know if you're anything like me you know in some level in your brain that it's not true but on another level that that doesn't stop you feeling fear even if you know it's not not a realistic fear exactly um i i think i have this irrational fear of you know hiv and like you, you know getting in like you know open cut and it doesn't make sense, but I think it's like OCD contamination fear because I'm constantly walking down the block, checking behind myself, you know, for, for hypodermic needles placed by drug users and, you know, constantly washing my hands. It's, 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 it, I realize the absurdity of it. It's, it's almost like a compulsion. Like, you know, I, I have to just keep doing it, keep doing it. I have like this fear of it. And it, it just, it's, it's almost like, like a tick, like, you know what I mean? Where it, I know it's, I know it's insane. It's like, it's kind of like how people with OCD have to keep washing their hands they realize tested for OCD because it does sound very much like what I've heard OCD is like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think when I described this to my, um, you know, doctors, it, it does sound like it's OCD. I'm not on any medication for OCD, but no. uh, it's definitely interfering with, um, you know, my functioning at the moment. And... Well, as problematic as it is, uh, I wouldn't want you to be on any more medication than you're already on, which is a shame. Uh, but, uh, I had I used to get lots of contamination fears like I used to be a real clean freak like no one was allowed into my bedroom with their shoes on because all oh, that would contaminate my room but I was really dirty in other ways like I, I messy like I didn't clean my room or anything like do, do you get these contradictory uh behaviors like this where you're really compulsive about one thing but something very similar you just don't care about even if you should care about it Oh yeah, um, I, you know maybe maybe you know I'm concerned about you know I can um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I guess I guess walking through the apartment with shoes on is is an example where it's like I walk through, but um, yeah, I mean there are there are ways I neglect my health, but in other ways I'm like so health like focused, so I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, which is probably bad for the podcast, but I, I but I'm sure if I if I thought about it a little more, I could probably come up with something. I'm sure this is true of everyone, but I am so much more scared of uh, acute danger, like being run over by a car or having a heart attack, something that can kill me right then and there, than things that are much more likely to kill you, like cancer or heart disease or things like that, uh, that kill you in like 10 years or 20 years. Like, it's much more scary if it could happen right now. <laughs> Even right. if it's not forever. Right, because, I mean, we're expecting to live, I mean, for I mean, many years to come. And imagine, um, imagine just, I mean, life can end in an instant. I mean, we, we're all mortal. And like right now, we could hypothetically speaking, have a heart attack and, you know, life could come to an end. I mean, most likely it's not going to happen, but it's a possibility. And, you know, that that is that is our mortality. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, most likely it's not going to happen, but it could. I really wish we had a health bar like in a video game so we knew how healthy we are because we could all have uh, like serious health problems right now and we just don't know it. There's some fish that have transparent bodies you can see inside them and you can see if they've got a problem inside them but unfortunately with us we've got all this uh, opaque skin we can't look inside and see if there's a problem even if it's a really obvious it would be a really obvious problem if our skin was as transparent as glass but it is not unfortunately. It sounds like you you have hypochondria too, where you constantly think, you know, you're sick. You constantly think you're dying, whether it's you know like brain cancer, an aneurysm, a heart attack, you know, HIV, whatever. But uh, everything indicates a skin cancer. Everything indicates you're healthy, but to you, if you feel like you know you're you're you feel like there's something wrong, even though all evidence is nothing is wrong. You know? Yeah. I used to get a massive hypochondria all the time, like I'd freak out until three in the morning, I'd just be incapable of sleeping. Sometimes I call the non-emergency line to the doctors, which I shouldn't have done, but I, I thought it might be an emergency. It turns out that I had a migraine problem and I now take painkillers for that, but it's hard to tell if uh, something is serious or not. And it took them a while to convince me that it was just headaches and it's not my brain about to explode in some unrealistic way. But 
now I barely get any hypochondria. Uh, it it seems to have like almost entirely cleared up. So uh, have you had changes like that in how much uh, hypochondria you have or in what kind of things you fear? Because I know you have uh, paranoid episodes where you think people are out to get you. I've never really had that, but uh, is that similar to your hypochondria? Um... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, you know, at least with the HIV, I, I, I constantly fear like maybe there's this psychopath that's placing things to contaminate me. So like I open up my car today and I noticed the door was wet. And, it, you know, most likely the evidence is it's, it's like morning dew or rain. Yeah. But I start to think, you know, did somebody, you know, rub something there to contaminate me, you know, some some psychopath like like HIV, whatever. And, uh, you know, that, that, that that's irrational. And um, I, I mean, I guess it's possible, but very improbable, you know. Well, I'm incredibly lazy, so I just assume everyone else is as lazy as me. So even if they're super malicious <laughs> and they want to hurt people, if they're as lazy as me, they, would, they wouldn't get out of bed and do it. Right. Or they'd be too incompetent to uh, do any harm. Exactly. And I, I think, uh, you, you know, I, I remember an old psychologist, you know, used this example, Damocles' sword hanging above your head. You think there's impending doom. Damocles, if you don't know the story, you think there's something like hanging above your head that's going to kill you. It could kill you at any time. And, you know, the, the evidence is I don't have Damocles' sword hanging above my head. Everything is everything is safe. Everything is sound, you know? There's there, so many people out there who really do have Damocles' sword hanging over their head. For example, uh, people in their 80s, they're just not going to live more than 20 more years. This is not going to happen. But they somehow manage to cope. Or there's people who have serious inherited diseases, which will limit their lifespan to like 20 or 30, and they somehow seem to manage I don't, I don't know how people uh, can cope like that. Do you have any clue? Um, I, you, I guess you got to be strong. I know like another example is having cancer. I mean, some people know their life is, you know, coming to an end and you just, ha you just have to accept it. I mean, wh what, what's the alternative, you know, not being strong. Um, so you just have to accept it and uh, make the best of it. And, you know, every day, every day is precious. Every day counts, smile and have a, uh, Hey, you have a positive outlook. I mean, you, you could, you could, you can have a negative outlook, be doom and gloom, you know, be depressed, or you can, you know, you know, go get your coffee in the morning, you know, watch whatever, whatever you like to do, just do it. And, you know, life is going to question uh, was based on the faulty premise that all these old people are coping with it. Like some of them are, but some of them probably do have a negative outlook. Uh, it's, Useful to try and have that positive outlook because it's not going to stop the problem if you are just miserable. Uh, it's best to try not to be miserable unless that misery is going to motivate you to fix the problem. If it's unfixable, well. <laughs> right. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, something like cancer, I mean, it, it, it might be unfixable, um, but, um, it, you know, um, you know, it, life... I mean, I, I know like some people b believe in God. I know you, you, you indicated uh, through our chat, chat that you're an atheist, right? Yeah, I used to have Richard Dawkins as my profile picture. Right. So quite the atheist. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, are a lot of people in England atheists? It is quite common, but most people are sort of kind of Christian. Like they're Christian in name only. They'll go around calling themselves Christian, but they won't go to church. They don't really believe in the Bible. They probably don't believe Jesus Christ was the son of God or that there's an afterlife, but they call themselves Christian because it's just a nice thing to do, I guess. Like uh, I, most people are like Christian for the social club aspect, I guess. I think it would be nice. I, I mean, because there, there are some really good, wholesome, you know, kind of people in the world. And I, I'd like, and there are some really bad people. And I'd like to think, you know, really good people, like nice people you've interacted with throughout your life. You know, you're going to be rewarded for being a kind person in the afterlife and you're going to see your friends again. And, you know, I mean, if you, if you're not going, if you, if you have a good outlook, you're being, you're being kind, you're, you're living a good life. I like to think, you know, all those people are going to be rewarded in some way. And people that go out, you know, maliciously hurting people, you know, they're going to be punished for their bad behavior. But I don't know, um, you know, but and it also it also like, you know, gets rid of the fear of death. You know, I mean, obviously, a lot of people are afraid of dying. And, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of dying. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm terrified of dying. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me like this. I couldn't buy into the idea that you're not really going to die when you die. So it didn't help me, but I've learned that it probably does help other people to cope with the sort of Damocles of we are all going to die at some point. Uh, 
if they can believe that. Um, you, you didn't do your wrestling opening uh, when you started this video. Uh, I was thinking earlier, I'm sh sure you've said this at some point in the past, so sorry to ask, but have you ever actually done wrestling? Because you do your wrestling promo, so uh, how, have you tried wrestling in either the actual wrestling form or the like more theatrical type? I remember when um, I was in early college years, like 18 years old, I did have like, like, a, like a daydream. Oh, I want to go to local wrestling schools and train to be a professional wrestler. But I, I mean, now in hindsight, I thought that that, that was a very immature dream. And, and, and first off, you know, I, I'm more of like an actor, comedian, wrestlers, you know, you got to, I mean, to really get noticed, you got to be like 6'6", 275 pounds, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 5'8", five, 5'9", like 180 you know like like if, if you're looking to really get noticed you have to have like a larger than life physique um so i but but yeah like performance wise character wise i definitely have the larger than life persona where i'm able to play the character but i think if i'm looking to get noticed in the wrestling industry you know you, you gotta you gotta have like a large muscular physique you know yeah even, even if it is all put on on all for show you have to look the part to get a role in a film like if you want to play a beautiful woman you have to be a beautiful woman unless they've got some really good makeup or if you want to be an old person you've got to be an old person and if you want to be a wrestler you've got to be like six foot tall unless they have some really good camera angles to make you look bigger than you are right you gotta you gotta look the part and even even in a scripted uh even in scripted entertainment like wrestling um you know look is look is a very important athleticism is very important um you know they're not going to you know you know take somebody who's five six uh 300 pounds and um you know put them in like the main event slot against some guy who's a giant like who looks like he could beat you up because unfortunately it's it's theatrical you want to see the monstrous Goliath, you know. I mean, you know. even if you want David to beat the Goliath, like if you want the little guy to beat the big guy, it's got to be believable. Like you can't have it too obviously scripted. I mean, they, they, they have tune out. they have Rey Mysterio, uh, who, who's I mean, he's he's older now, but he 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 was a little bit like like a small like luchador underdog who was who was really fast, and I mean that was his kind of like he was kind of like the the underdog kind of like character at one point. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that you've got into comedy and you're more of a comedian, but how did you get into comedy? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I always liked shows like The Simpsons and Seinfeld. I, I listened to, you know, like, sh like, like radio shows that were, were comedy. And, um, you know, I, I just, and my, my dad was funny growing up and, you know, he, he had a good sense of humor. So, uh, you, you know, I, I think, I think I, I, I've just always liked the genre of comedy. And uh, I was even, even like in middle uh, elementary school and middle school, like I, I was making the other kids laugh and, um, you know, uh, I, I always had a good sense of humor and I always had a, a comedic personality. And it's still there today. <laughs> is your, is your pot of mayonnaise still there? They're just rotting away in the corner. <laughs> oh, you, you, you mean like the mayonnaise jar with the, with the money in it? Yeah. I, I, I clean it out with water and soap, but it, it, it you know, let me get it. The, the, the label fell off, but uh, here oh, it is. It's, it's getting you, old now. Here it is. Cool. Quite a bit of money in there. Lots of coins. Lots of coins. Wow. What, what, what system? What system of uh, you know uh, money do 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 you use in uh, England? I know in America. To be honest, it's mostly just cards. Uh, I mean, when I buy things, I almost always just like get my card, swipe it on the little contact list thing. We do have our pounds and pence. Uh, it's basically the same as dollars and cents, from what I can tell. Uh, it's just worth a little less or a little more. I forget what the exchange rate is. I once bought some stuff from Japan and it was like a hundred pounds worth, like two hundred dollars. But the price in yen was like a hundred thousand yen because their money is like one, like penny is one pound, if you know, like one cent is one dollar. So it just looked amazingly expensive. It was like, ah, I don't want to pay that much for anything. But yeah, uh, have you ever seen any uh, Japanese coins? They look really weird. They've got like a little hole in the middle. No, um, but um, have you ever have you ever been to Japan? No, uh, I used to want to go, but it, it's so much hassle traveling somewhere. I'm content to just 
watch things on on the internet. I, I'm content to just watch videos of things. And um, plus, I suck at languages. I wouldn't want to go somewhere if I didn't know the language. So if I was going to go on holiday, it'd be to like America or Canada or somewhere like that. Uh, have you ever considered going or been somewhere where you don't speak the language? I, I was I was interested in you know maybe going to South Korea, Japan, uh, uh, even England, uh, Germany. Um, I've been to Canada, but uh, you know, and, and also like you, like you said, it's it, you. I'm also kind of content just staying in, in at home in New York and just not going anywhere. So there's kind of like, uh, you know, packing the luggage, staying on the plane for hours. It's kind of like it's, and, and plus I don't really have much money to spend at the moment either. But like, but being 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 on a plane, uh, you got to kind of be with somebody that that's fun, and you know, it, it 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 might be fun if I go with the right friends and everything is kind of yeah. But, uh, um, but uh, you know, at the moment, with not much money saved, I'm just going to stay. I'd almost here. forgot that it costs money as well as time. Because <laughs> the time and effort would be more than enough to stop me doing something. Um, this brings up a point I've been thinking about. Uh, you seem to have a lot of motivation to do things, like going to the comedy club and uh, making these videos and your drawings. But I have very little motivation. Uh, how do you get your motivation to do things, if you know... Uh, to be honest with you, I, I really don't have much motivation. I'm kind of like you, but uh, I think my friend pushed me to do comedy and it was really one of the best experiences of my life. I, I loved getting up on stage and performing. I, I, it was, it was you know, the crowd reacted warmly to me and I'm glad my friend pushed me. And even like my experiences in New York City, it's kind of like my friend just like pushing me, pushing me. And I'm, I'm really thankful because if, if it wasn't for people just, you know, almost taking me by the hand and leading me around, I probably wouldn't do anything. I'm still not sure whether that's a benefit or a cost <laughs> of having friends if they push you to do things. Because I am quite content with my life. Sometimes I feel like I should do more, like, oh, I should try and learn chess or I should try and learn a language or something or learn to draw. But I, I do it for a few days and then I'm like, I'm perfectly fine not doing this. I could just watch someone else do it. Right. I mean, uh, how, um, like, are you tempted to do things that you don't think you actually need to do like do you, do you sometimes feel like you're being pressured to do things or think you need to do things that aren't actually necessary for you to be happy um i think i think with the psychiatric psychiatric medication and this is this is something um i feel like i'm i'm Okay, so I definitely suffer from psychosis, delusions. I definitely, you know, get bipolar mania, depression, and I, I do get symptoms. But also, I feel like I am getting pressure to take medication, uh, at least high doses of medication, uh, by my parents because uh, they're afraid. You know, I think I've made a lot of progress in CBT, um, but you know, my parents are kind of you know, scared because of my past behavior uh, for me to come down on medication. So I'm getting, a, I'm getting a lot of pressure to stay on high doses of medication, um, even though, you know, me personally, I want to experiment coming down because I feel like I've made a lot of progress, uh, you know, in, in terms of independence, in terms of, you know, progress in therapy. And I think, I think it's something to, uh, you know, take, you know, ex experiment with, and we are starting to come down a little bit and I think I'm doing well overall. Yeah, as long as you're doing that in a controlled way, that sounds good. I've heard that CBT can make you unlearn bad habits of mind that you had and give you some good habits to replace them with. So you might need medication for the CBT to work, but uh, once it's done its job, you might not need so much medication. Exactly. Um, and e even the psychopharmacologist who, you know, believes in, you know, medicating you know that's that's his, that's his area of expertise he's even indicated that you know i've made so much progress in cbt and you know the need for medication might not be as as necessary because i have made so much progress i mean like in uh you know in 2011 when, when i first you know started getting medicated um you know like i wasn't even able to re like realize the delusions are like metaphors i wasn't able to catch it check it change it and, uh, you know, thanks to CBT, I have, you know, you know, I've made tremendous progress in you know, dismiss, realizing it's like an emotional tsunami and catching it before, you know, the, the rage overtakes me and, uh, you know, fighting it off and not, I, 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 I've made a lot of progress. How hard is knowing that something is a delusion? Because you do quite regularly post uh, videos or tweets saying the same kind of things like, oh, my mum's out to get me or, oh, I'm going to get HIV. Like, how long does it take you to realise that's a delusion? 
Um, I think, uh, you know, the ones uh, my parents have been in my existence delusions, I think that correlates with emotion. So usually if my mom says something like she's high emotion, she's screaming, she's shouting. It's kind of, I mean, this is a cheesy example, but it's kind of like Marvel's The Incredible Hulk, where like, I'm like, a, like calm, everything's peaceful. My mom starts screaming, shouting, I get full of rage. Then instead of like, you know, reacting aggressive, I'm, I'm passive, but I get delusional. So it's, it's a little bit like an emotional tsunami where I get confused about my mom because, you know, I, I, I trend, I, I get angry. Um, I think, I think, um, I think, you know, the HIV, I usually, the new, scenario replaces it so like you know I'll, I'll i'll touch something on my door and that will be the new hiv uh, hiv catastrophe and then i'll go to the, the phlebotomist that's the new hiv catastrophe then i'll you go to the gym and i'll touch you know the treadmill with bitten nails that will be the you know the, the latest one replaces the old one but i need to realize it's the same broken record again and again and again you know realize it's the same it's the same story it's just a new scenario and, I, and when it comes to the delusions of grandeur, the famous, you know, like celebrities are, are watching you, you know, movie companies are watching you, um, you know, that, that interferes with functioning too. That's more of a positive delusion. But, uh, you know, why would you want to work an ordinary job like, you know, doing peer specialist work at the, at, at the psychosocial clubhouse when you think you should be a Hollywood superstar, you know, so unfortunately, you know, the, 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 the like the grandiose delusions are bad because they also interfere with functioning, even though, you know, they're seen as being, you know, not as scary. Do you think your delusions have gone down lately? Because I haven't seen you post uh, as many grandiose things as you used to. Uh, um, lately. That's, a, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think, I, I think I, you know, lately I haven't been around my parents as much. I've, you know, I've been in, in this area. So the, the, re the delusions about my parents, since I'm not really around them as much, don't really flare up. But I, I still kind of believe, you know, there's undercover celebrities, undercover secret admirers, undercover like people from years ago, you know, you know, uh, there, there's this there's this person from behind the scenes pulling the strings and all evidence shows, you know, people that are presently in your life, you know, like your doctors, people you met in New York City. Uh, those are the people in your life. There's no, you know, person behind the curtain. You know, there's no movie company. It, it would be nice. But, uh, you know, I don't need that daydream. And I think the reason I did create the daydreams was because I didn't have friends uh, uh, for a while. I didn't have girlfriends. I didn't have a job. I was home all day long with my parents. So I needed these fantasies, uh, you know, to comfort me from the absence and sadness I was living through. And that's the reason I kind of created the fantasy land. But um, I don't need the fantasy land as much anymore because I am starting to get a life for the first time in my life. And I think that's a great thing. You mentioned that when your mum gets you all emotional, instead of getting aggressive, you get delusional. Do you think it's better to be delusional than aggressive? Because when I was living at home and my delusions have got a lot worse, well, I didn't get delusions. I got aggressive, unfortunately. I never hurt anyone, but I did hurt the drywall as the stereotypical person who punches holes in the walls. Uh, that's what I was when I was living at home. And now that I'm not living there, I'm not aggressive at all. Um, so so moving out can decrease your problems, but do you think aggression is better or worse than delusion? Um, it, it, it definitely isn't good to remain passive and internalize and not let out your emotion. But if you're punching the walls, um, that's destructive and that's bad. I, I think I think the best way to be is assertive. So say your mom or your stepdad or whoever irritates you say to them, why are you this way in a mature and, you know, outspoken kind of way. Sometimes, you know, when, when your parents have the power and you're dependent on them, you, you know, you're viewed as the child. I mean, unfortunately, it's hard to assert yourself. And, you know, that that leads to delusions that leads to punching walls. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit like a temper tantrum, you know, you, you have to, you have to kind of like submit to the parents. And then, you, you know, after we get yelled at for a while, you punch a wall like, like a child. And, I don't know. I, I guess the, the best way to be is assert yourself. If somebody says something that, that upsets you, let them know in a mature kind of way. And I think that's the best way to be. Hmm. Uh, good advice. A couple of years ago, I thought that I was depressed because I have so little motivation to do anything. But when I spoke to the psychiatrist, they asked me, well, do you actually want to change? And I don't really want to change. I'm quite content with my not doing anything life. So how content are you in in your life right now 
Um, obviously, I would love more friends. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm cont- I mean, I enjoy doing my artwork. I enjoy, you know, like the drawings and videos and artwork I do. Um, but I, I do, I would like more of a social life. I would like more of, I would like more money. But I, you know, like if I was, you know, going to an accounting job, you know, nine to five or whatever, you know, patiently sitting there, sedentary lifestyle, filling out numbers, I think I'd be pretty miserable. So in a way, you know, although I'm not making much money on disability, in a way, a, a, while my parents are enabling it, because it is a house of cards when my mom, you know, you know, quite frankly, dies, it's going to, I'm going to be a shit's creep without a paddle. But, you know, in a way, there is a comfortability here because I'm, I, you know, it, it's, it's okay. You know, it, it's, it's it, you know, I, I would love more money. I would love more friends. I would love the ability to travel. But it's also, you know, I don't have to go to my nine to five job that I'm miserable going to. So, it, it, you know, there, there is kind of like a comfortability there too. I totally understand that. I was dreading getting a job. I put it off by going to college. That's the main reason I got educated was so I didn't have to go to work for a few years. But my job isn't actually that bad. It wasn't as dreadful as I was expecting it to be to work nine to five, though. I wish I did have a bit more free time available to waste sleeping and doing nothing with. Right. Uh, and but- and if, if you get money, you, you can get a sense of independence. You know, you can socialize more. You can you know take these acting and comedy classes. So, you know, money, money, obviously, in modern society is very important. And um so you know, up to a point, like uh, if you've got loads of money, but you're spending all your life working to get that money, you're not going to be able to enjoy it, are you? I guess you're right. Um, you raised the point of when your mum goes away, you're going to be uh, up shit's Creek. Uh, it reminds me of how little hope I've got for my future, even though I've been living independently for the last better part of a decade. I've been in the same job. But I still don't feel independent, even though I've been living on the other side of the country to my family. I still feel like when they go away, I'm going to be like totally lost. Uh, So I don't want to bring up this like depressing point. But even if you did get a job and stuff, it might not totally give you that feeling of independence that you think it might. Uh, Yeah, there's definitely uh, there's definitely a feeling you think independence will you know, make you feel less depressed or less, you know, more like a, like an ordinary person. But the truth is, I guess nobody really feels like, you know, they're, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess, I, I see your point. I don't know. I don't really know how to elaborate on that. So I, I don't want to sit here like a job interview person, but like, where do you see yourself in like five years? Like how much hope do you have for your future? Um, I would like to, I mean, I would like to be a successful artist, like like a modern day Vincent Van Gogh, you know, doing acting, like a re- Renaissance man kind of doing acting, comedy, you know, selling my artwork, um, you know, maybe doing little performances on Broadway, maybe being in movies, um, you know, maybe putting my art in art galleries. This is my dream, um, you know, and I think I think my artwork is getting very attention grabbing and very good, and I, I'm I'm going to keep working at it. But like people say, be realistic while you pursue your, 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 your dreams on the side, you know, like work at the psychosocial clubhouse, you know, don't put all your eggs into the, I'm going to make myself like an iconic artist basket. I, you know, have realistic, um, realistic, you know, dream, like have realistic goals, like, you know, work in the mental health community, do your art on the side. And if you get lucky, great. Um, if you don't, you know, you're not going to be up Shit's Creek because you'll be making money when your mom, when your mom is no longer. Yeah, you know. diversify a bit, uh, try different things, like try a, like, nine to five job and also do a bit of art, or you don't have to, like, go straight into working, like, 40 hours a week full time, like, there's part time jobs out there, like, I know some people who only work two days a week, uh, so that is a possibility. Um, I, I know with mental health recovery, maybe starting part time or maybe even getting something like you know, through mental health recovery groups, you know, telling them, you know, I, 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 I am trying to, you know, you know, make a recovery. I, I am going to start out slow, maybe doing 16 hours, not losing my disability and you know, starting to build. And then maybe if, if you do well in that, you know, then, you know, grow into like a, a like a 40 hour job. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be like part-time to full-time, you know, or no, like nothing to full-time, you, you know, you could slowly build your way up to that. 
given how difficult it is to get on disability and how easy it is to lose it, it's kind of un, like demotivating to get a job because you don't want to lose it. Because even if you're feeling fine right now, in five or 10 years, you might have a relapse and uh, be worse again and really need the disability and you might not be able to get it. Right, yeah, right now I'm a, I'm a disabled adult. Since I really have never worked in my adulthood, I'm like a disabled adult child. And, you know, when, when my mom, you know, passes away, I'm going to get her disability um, because, you know, you, you know, I'm going to be make, making a great deal of money. And if I work for more than 12 months, I lose the adult child status. Um, so in a way, I'm almost given the incentive to never work and just collect disability my whole life. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I want to create a life for myself. I want to be a successful, you know, artist, a movie star or whatever. But um I mean, I kind of regret getting a job because I used to get like £450 a month in uh, disability benefits. And now I get nothing because I got a job and like I earn about £1,000 a month. But that's only like twice what I was earning for not doing anything. Uh. Right. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, the system we, we live in, it, it gives a lot, a lot of people incentive to not work. And um, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. But um I think uh, ultimately, uh, you know, not working limits your ability to uh, live an ordinary life. Yeah, and it limits who you can socialize with. Like, work is a way to meet people, I guess. I, well, I heard people say that, but it hasn't really been that way for me. Uh, one guy I watch uh, who also has mental problems, uh, he recorded his job interviews and he got a job really quickly. I was shocked about this uh, because he tried to get some low level jobs. He just applied for a security guard job. It seems really scary and stressful to be a security guard, but you, you seem to just be able to get that kind of job for like two days a week just like that it seems very easy to get certain jobs so uh, would you consider getting like a, a an easy job like that well, like you know, a, I mean an easy to get one like a barista at a coffee shop stock at a supermarket cashier or a restaurant yeah. waiter um I think I think uh you know working in the mental health community maybe taking online classes and getting something that at least satisfies you know you know like like at least I could feel like I'm helping people who are struggling with mental health conditions you know working in like as a barista you know I I mean I, I mean I, I'm I'm getting, I'm 34 years old you know what I mean I kind of feel like you know they're, they're mostly college kids and I mean even even if even if I'm making minimal wage if I'm doing it in the mental health community I think um I think at least that would, you know, at least make me feel like I'm doing something that's that's mature. You you kind of look like a college kid still, so you fit in there. You do I guess look so. quite young. Um, you're Thank keeping you. yourself fit. Oh um, yeah. Sometimes uh, I just depress the hell out of myself on social media. Like I'll read a bunch of really like negative stories about like uh, police beating up mentally ill people or uh, people being made homeless because their parents kicked them out. And I'm not sure why I read these things that make me sad. I just get into this mood where I read a sad story and then I have to read some more similar sad stories. And it's like a big cycle. Do you get stuff like that? I remember something what, similar. I remember what, like, 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 like roughly when I was like 18 years old, I used to watch like shows like Cops and America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries. And the show and the shows, I, you know, I, I did, they, they scared me a little bit. So I, I used to get like a thrill from them and they used to depress me. And it was a really negative kind of thing. And then, then, then eventually I switched my obsession to professional wrestling. And when I switched to professional wrestling, I'm like, this is, this is happier entertainment. This is like, this is like a light shining. This is like, you're, ne you're never going to really feel sad watching this so I, I mean sometimes sometimes a lot of people like 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 get a thrill or they're, they're fascinated by you know dark topics but then I you know then when you when you discover something that's like light-hearted you know fun that makes you smile sometimes sometimes you just gotta you know like not really obsess about the, the negative stuff and just you know focus on something that's a little that's bit not to obsess about things in general <laughs> right uh like, sometimes I think looking at dark stuff could help prepare me in case I get some bad luck and some dark stuff happens to me. It could help prepare me for that situation. But there's not really much you can do about these problems. So look, pre there's only so much you can prepare for such things. So uh, and I, I, th I, I think, I think uh, you know, you got to be realistic, too. You can't live it like deluding yourself to the fact that, you know, bad things don't happen because bad things definitely do happen. 
Uh, but you don't want to be, you don't want to be doom and gloom either. Like Mr. Everything is, is negative because it's like with uh, the blood draw, like bad things could happen from that, but it's best not to overstate that and obsess over it. Exactly. Luck seems to be super important in life. I keep meeting people similarly to the depressing stories. I keep meeting people who have had much less lucky lives than me. And it's difficult to deal with that because I don't feel like I'm that lucky myself. But if I see someone who's far less fortunate than myself, it, it just makes me feel pretty guilty for like moaning about my own problems when these people have had far worse problems. Do you have similar feelings? Um, I think so. Uh, yeah, I definitely, you know, view people who, you know, don't have the opportunities I have, because you know, even though I do have it kind of rough right now, you know, I'm, I'm on disability, I still have a place to live, you know, there are people in my situation who have it far worse, and sometimes, sometimes I'm very intelligent, you know, and high functioning compared to a lot of people who have it worse than me, and, you know, I guess I do feel guilty that, you know, I am, you know, so talented when it comes to certain things, and, you know, people who, you know, struggle just as much as me, if not more, you know, don't have the talent and intelligence that I have. And, um, you know, I, I kind of feel guilty because I kind of wish they did. I wish everybody could kind of, you know, um, you know, accomplish their dreams. But I mean, you know, yeah, unfortunately, some people, you know, don't have creativity. Some people don't have as much intelligence. And um, yeah, I kind of feel guilty about it. But it's just, it's just, I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, unfortunately, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a good perspective. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. So uh, you, you didn't choose to be luckier than them or them to be less lucky. Oh, and I'm not saying I'm lucky, but yeah, some people, some people, I mean, I mean, and not everybody's the same. I mean, like, like, like Michael Phelps, the swimmer. I mean, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I don't, no, neither, neither one of us will ever be able to swim anywhere close to his talent because he's, ne he's genetically gifted and um, it's just the reality. And he's like, he's like one of the most decorated Olympians of all time. I, I mean, but you could go into the pool and enjoy swimming, but you probably, and maybe Michael Phelps feels guilty that he is the most talented swimmer to ever exist. Or maybe he just, uh, maybe he just, uh, you know, you know, doesn't feel guilty. Who knows? I'm sure he works hard to get to be the best, but oh, you yeah. also need the genetic. It's like a lot of things. You need genes and also like practice. You know, oh, yeah. if, Mike, if, if Michael Phelps never practiced and never worked, worked really hard, he would, he, he could be genetically inclined to do it, but he would never be, you, you know, you, you have to be a hard worker who's, driven and ferocious to be an Olympic gold medalist. You have to be just really driven, you know? Totally, totally. I, one reason I find it difficult to get motivated to do things is because there's so many things to do out there. Uh, that I've got thousands of video games, hundreds of films out there to watch. Uh, do you find it difficult? Do you get paralyzed by choice like this, where there's so much stuff out there you could be doing? It's hard to decide what to do um maybe in years past but since finding comedy and performing on video and doing like 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 performances and acting and um you know drawings you know like my artwork i, I find i find satisfaction in that i'm really happy with you know, you know the, the things i'm actually pursuing so i mean yeah i'm not making money doing it at the moment but maybe someday i will but i, I certainly have a hobby that i'm really passionate about and even exercise going to the gym um, it relaxes me and, you know, I walk on the treadmill and it's like meditative and listening to music. So I, I kind of enjoy what I'm doing. I just wish I had more money, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Do you think you've made it into kind of a part of your routine to do these things? Like you've got like a routine of doing your drawing, doing a bit of exercising. Is that what's helped you to like choose to do these things and not get paralyzed thinking about what to do and uh, to motivate you to actually do them? Because uh, is it part of your routine? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah, like I, I usually make a video every day and this is even a video, uh, you know, and it's self-expression, which is great for mental health. You know, it, rather than remaining passive, you let out your frustrations or like even you tell jokes or you, you let you, you express yourself in artwork. So sometimes, sometimes rather than bottling up emotions, you let out your, uh, you know, your thoughts through artwork. And it's, it's kind of good for mental health too, being creative, I think. Um, 
I'm unlike you, I'm not that funny. I've always wanted to be funnier. I thought that if I made uh, YouTube videos like Let's Plays, I could learn to be a funny person, but that didn't work. Uh, are there ways that you can learn to be funny or is it like Michael Phelps that you just need the genetic skill? Um, <laughs> I, I know, like I saw somebody joking about this on social media. Lots of trauma. I'm just joking. But like, like lots of negative trauma, life experiences. I don't know. It, it makes you like, it, it makes you like, I don't know. It gives you a dark sense of humor, but uh, I don't know. I was if that's... just wondering if there was like an actual clown college you could go to to learn to be a clown. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, you just gotta, you just gotta smile and laugh and just have a silly personality. And um, I don't know. I mean, just, 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 just if, if, if you're looking to make light of things and laughing at, rather than feeling doom and gloom and pain, I think that's a good start. I, I see a lot of people online uh, talking about autism, which is obviously very different from what you've got, saying that they don't want to be cured of it because they think it's such a big part of who they are and their identity. Do you feel the same way about your condition? I, just for full disclosure, would quite like to treat my autism. I'm not sure if I'd like to cure it. But I don't think it's like the entirety of who I am. I think it's a big part of who I am, but maybe a mostly negative part. Uh, so uh, would you like uh, your, is your issues cured if they could be cured? Um, I, I, don't, I don't want my personality to change, but there are, I don't want to be on medication. And I would love to get rid of like delusions and psychosis and you know, certain things. I mean, I do like mania to an extent where it's able, like I'm able to exercise, I'm able to, to perform but I, I, even that, I want to be quelled a little bit. So I think I think if I could cure this sort of without medication in a natural kind of way, I think I, I would like that. Yeah. Um, everyone differs quite a bit from one another. Do you sometimes wonder whether your differences are due to your mental issues or are just due to just the natural way people differ from each other? Can it be hard to tell if some unusual behavior you've got is just because people are different from each other or because it's a mental issue um i think I, I think a lot of people i mean a lot of people like you know stigmatize people who have schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder bipolar and assume like everybody with schizophrenia is exactly the same but um you know some people are more intelligent than others some people are more creative than others some people have better senses of humor than others it's kind of like anything you know like there are accountants that are more intelligent than other accountants there are doctors that are more talented than other doctors um and uh you know uh I, it's it's kind of you know i mean just because somebody has a mental illness doesn't make them identical to everybody who else who has the same mental illness yeah there's a lot of diversity as you say just like within jobs um i'm kind of glad that i'm not famous because even if you've only got like a thousand or ten thousand followers on youtube it, it seems to create a lot of uh, hassle for you you can get stalkers you can also as you've said in the past, you've been a bit worried that you might say something that will get your channel taken down, which I think is kind of a delusion. I don't think you are a very edgy person compared to most people on the site. But um, there are even worse dangers than that. I keep reading about people who get arrested, uh, obviously not in so much in the USA with your First Amendment than over here, for things that I've said that are a bit too edgy and it can be hard to know what's crossing the line and what's too dangerous and what's not dangerous enough if you're not famous then no one's going to see even if you do say something bad so do you sometimes uh, get feel thankful that you're not famous or are you still like really despite the costs of fame pushing to be famous um i i am pushing to be famous um I, you know um I don't think I know exactly what that would in, entail, though. I, you know, I, I want to be I want to be a successful artist. I want to be in movies. I want you know fame and money and that kind of thing. But um, I don't really visualize what it would actually be like. You know, obviously you have to deal with stalkers. You have to deal with bullies and cyber bullies and uh, you know that. I mean, I, I would need a little bit of like training and preparation and you know, handling that, you know, might be in like an overwhelming tsunami. If I instantaneously had a viral video, then became 
you know, like on, on all the late night talk shows, you know, it might, it might be, It'd it might be like be... if you won the lottery and just suddenly had a lot of money, you've obviously heard the stories of people who got loads of money and it ruined their life. I mean, money's good, but somehow people who get loads of it seem to always crash and burn if they get it really suddenly. And fame could be the same if you get a viral video. Well, you've seen the people who get viral videos. They often crash and burn too. Have, have you ever heard of the rock band Nirvana? with Kurt oh, Cobain. Of course. Um, he, yeah, I, I mean, um, he uh, he suffered from mental health challenges and he was kind of, you know, he got like, like he was massively famous, probably one of the most famous, you know, rock stars at, during that time. And um, it wasn't good for his mental health, you know. It's hard to tell what would have happened if he hadn't got famous, but I mean, what did happen was pretty <laughs> bad. It would be hard, to, hard to be worse than what did happen. <laughs> right. But we still remember him at least. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he put he put out some some good grunge music. But yeah, he, he was he was kind of like a runaway train at that, you know, uh, and uh, it ended badly. I don't think he was medicated though, so maybe if he was on medication and getting CBT and you know talking to doctors, maybe it wouldn't. But I mean, the the enormous fame. I mean, his music was very aggressive. His music was very like rage filled, and you you could see he was screaming out for somebody to empathize with him. But um, it was kind of like. Uh, yeah, he needed, he needed, he needed, he needed help, I think. Uh, weren't drugs a big part of uh, what happened with him? Oh, yeah. Like no, 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 always no. best to avoid drugs if you can. Yeah, drugs, I mean, dr- uh, abstain from drugs, abstain from alcohol, you know, get into therapy. And, you know, maybe Kirk Cobain would still be here today, right? Abstain from drugs, except the ones you're prescribed. Hey, that's what I mean, yeah. Besides prescription medication, yeah. And even then, it's best to wean off it uh, for the most part. Um rather than be a bit too dependent on it. Uh, fame seems to be a bit like a drug to some people. They're like really addicted to it and they search for it everywhere. But I mean, uh, fame is one of those things that it seems like it's just all good sides, that if you got this fame thing, it'd fix all your problems and just make your life just so perfect. But everything has downsides to it, even fame. Um, and it's best to remember that because you, it might not be worth as much effort and uh, like sacrifice as you think it is when you just look at it from afar and only see the positives yeah yeah, I, see yeah, a lot, yeah. I see a lot of people who obsess over relationships or getting the perfect job and they think oh if i just got this all my problems would go away but that rarely happens i know it's like the iceberg cartoon have you ever seen it you, you, when you see celebrities when you see people on social media you only see the tip of the iceberg them at their best them like you know dressed perfectly them performing but you don't see the hard work, the sacrifice, like the, the, the cyber bullies, the stalkers, the nonstop paparazzis, and you don't see all the negativity they have to deal with. You just see them, you know, putting on a fun performance on stage. You're like, wow, I want my life to be like that. But you don't see all, all but I'm sure having a lot of money, you know, makes life easier. You can, but you get <laughs> that makes up for a lot of stuff. <laughs> right. So you, you get a doc, you get like the best doctors, you get, you get, you live in a mansion, you put up a gate, you, 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 you just keep, keep everybody out, you know? The problem with social media fame is that it gets all the downsides of fame without the money part. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and uh, I, I think, uh, I think yeah, that, that's, you know, that's exactly a, a great point. I think a lot of people, um, you know, get, get, get like an illusion of fame from social media. Well, uh, on social media, even small channels who have like a thousand or 10,000 subscribers, that is so many more people watching you than we've really been evolved to deal with. Like, how many times have you had a thousand people sitting around listening to what you've got to say in real life? Like, not very often. Exactly. That's a yeah, very good point. And, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of, it kind of, and so it, it, you don't even grasp who is actually reading what you write, who is listening to what you write. Uh, and I, I know we, we, met, we mentioned, you know, sometimes I know like with your posts and my posts, we don't even grasp anybody who might actually be reading it. It's almost like our own personal diary. We're publicizing it with the hopes of turning it into a movie, turning it into a book, turning it into something that gets published. But uh, in, in a way, like if, if I, I was, you know, a cyber bully was reading it and they were getting ready to sabotage me, I, you know what, that, that's another example of being up shit's creep without a paddle because I, yeah, I am trying to publish it, but I'm, I'm hoping somebody positive helps me rather than sabotages me, you know? 
I definitely use Twitter as a diary. I used to, I didn't even know there was a timeline for the first like year I used Twitter. I just logged into Twitter and posted my stuff and occasionally got people reply to it. And I'm like, what the hell? Someone's replying to me? Oh God, that's scary. <laughs> actually replying to me. It's a bit weird whenever I get comments on my videos too. It's like, what the hell? Someone actually watched this? Don't they have better things to do? But uh, yeah. Um, do you watch a lot of YouTube? Um, I, I I get recommended a lot of professional wrestling clips, a lot of Simpsons clips. I, I see like I, I saw this woman who was attractive who was drumming. I thought that I thought that was interesting. I I, I can't I, you know I watch a lot of you know music clips like a lot a lot of classic you know bands. I was watching like Talking Heads and um yeah I mean I, I watch a lot of like miscellaneous things. I don't think I'm subscribed to any channels. Uh, I'm trying to think what, what what I'm subscribed to. I mean, yeah, not, nothing really, you know, like not not. Re- I don't really subscribe to any like small content creator stuff. I basically only use the subscription feature. I try and avoid the algorithm as far as possible because I don't want the Google to tell me what I should and shouldn't watch. But it's just impossible to avoid it now because when you search for things on Google, have you noticed that they'll throw recommended videos up there alongside the things that are actual search results? And it's a bit hard to differentiate them. Exactly. Um, do, do you find that the recommendations are good? Like, do you find things that you actually are like, yeah, that was good. Thank you for recommending that to me when you're recommended videos. Um, I, yeah, I, I think I think they're pretty, pretty good. I, I mean, like, so so say you watch like si- Simpsons clips, it will recommend more Simpsons clips. And I'm like, oh, this is this is this is uh, this is interesting. Um, yeah, I, 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 I do find myself, uh, you know, clicking the recommendations. So I think I think they're pretty good. I think they're pretty pretty. Uh, and I, I noticed like you you watch wrestling clips, it will recommend more wrestling clips, and um, you know it, it, it usually it usually kind of like you know what what you're searching for it kind of like gives you. Or, or if you t- if, if you search for mental health, I remember I was searching for mental health, and um, you know there was a small content creator who was doing mental health videos, and it was it was suge- and like it was suggesting that, and there was a doctor who was doing mental health videos. So it was suggesting that, and, and like I found a lot of like 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 the content about mental health kind of fascinating. And because I was searching mental health, I was how I discovered these people. As much as I would like to say the algorithm sucks, everything it's recommended to me has been pretty good. It has been what I'd like to to see. So I can't diss the algorithm too much. Um, do you think that you could do anything to? get the algorithm to promote you of like I see a lot of YouTubers talk about all the things they do to try and get picked up by the algorithm and recommended to people do you think you could uh, get recommended um I, I think I don't know how I would go about getting myself recommended more maybe not age restricting videos I've, I've stopped doing that like I was there was a time I was age restricting every video because like you said I'm not that controversial but I was kind of afraid, I, you know, I, I kind of wanted to just do like everybody, everybody who views my content, 18 and older, you know, you, you, you like, it's kind of like, a, you know, a, you, this is like a rated R channel. You know, I did the same thing. I mean, I, I understand getting paranoid when YouTube was like, oh, we're going to alert you to the police if uh, your video says it's like aimed for children, but it's actually aimed at 18 year olds. Okay. Like that, that was a bit of a scary situation for everyone, but nothing came of it. I mean, a lot of stories are like that. They seem really scary at the time, but then a year later, it's just blown over and it didn't actually turn into anything. I, th- I think a longer videos are another way. Uh, I, I think you, the YouTube algorithm like likes content that you know go about 10 minutes. So I think that's another way of getting your videos, you know, promoted. Although they, they have a new content with uh, shorter videos, like like 30 second to like a minute videos. And I noticed, you know, I did, a, I had a cheese fondue thing in New York City and it was considered like a shorter video and that got a lot of views. So may, maybe, maybe it's not always long content. Maybe it is sometimes shorter content. They're constantly changing that algorithm. I always hear YouTubers bitching about it. Um, but a lot of the, like these big channels, they seem to do a lot of work trying to get recommended to people. Have you like looked into like you want to be famous, but have you looked into like how you can get famous on YouTube and how you can get like or do you want to get famous in another venue and not on YouTube? Um, 
you, you know, I, I mean, I, like like the artwork, um, I, I would love to present that at an art gallery. It would be cool to you know, to to do videos and um, you know, get because I obviously I've been I've been doing videos for years, and I would love to develop like some sort of documentary or like performance or like comedy performance or something to that effect. But also, yeah, I, I guess YouTube is uh, YouTube would be a great way to place to present my artwork, right? If you could uh, choose. A, like one thing to be famous for what would you want to be famous for like your art or youtube or your comedy i, I guess i guess youtube acting comedy yeah i, I guess my, my videos i think are my strength that that is kind of you know what i'm best at wouldn't would you wouldn't you say uh your art like uh, if you could uh be famous for just one of these things which would it be probably probably the videos um because yeah. because you know i i i've been doing the performances at right from the very beginning so i've noticed your mum is good at art did she teach you to draw or did you learn by yourself oh we do artwork together out back oh. usually but uh, she hasn't really taught me we just kind of do it i do my own thing she does her own thing you know we kind of passively learn by seeing what she does i guess we, we give each other ideas i'm like all right mom draw this and she'll draw it or whatever sometimes i, I give her ideas sometimes I, you know and um but yeah, yeah. You ever tried doing music? Um, no. Have Have you? I, I've. I, 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 no. I, 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 mean, I, I have music lessons in school, and I just sucked. I could not like get the hang of it at all. Um. I, I mean, I mean, sometimes I do like little like nerd rap on on YouTube. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Like like little. Uh, it's like just little I guess little I'll search for it later. Little, little 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 songs, but I, I mean, obviously, I don't know how to play the guitar. I don't know how to sing. I, I just kind of do whatever. Is there any skill that you really want to learn, like playing the guitar or learning a language or what have you? Um, I guess acting. I, I would love to 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 to, uh, to get better at acting. Huh. Are there any like resources that are online that you would uh, want to look at for learning to act? Like, or do you think that would be helpful? Because I'm like, I would like to learn to voice act, but uh, I was thinking of getting some books on it, but I'm not sure if that'd be very useful. Like, is acting a skill that you can learn from reading a book or watching a lecture on it? Or is it something you just have to try and try and try until it sticks? Um. I don't know. I think everybody's approach to learning acting, everybody's approach to learning a new talent is different. Um, I forget exactly. It wasn't called outsider artist. It, I, I, maybe it was called outsider art, where you, you, you're doing acting, but you have no outside influence in it. So you're, you're kind of you're kind of you're experimenting it in your own way. And I, I think I, that it, you know you're kind yeah, of. I've heard outside art is when you haven't been trained by anyone you just taught yourself how to do it so you're not constrained by any of like schools and how they teach you to act you just act your own way right so I think that's kind of that's kind of like what I'm doing I'm doing like outsider art acting I see a lot of uh, videos like analyzing films, but I don't actually watch many films. Uh, do you like to analyze things or obviously you watch a lot of movies, but do you like to analyze them? Like figure out how they work, why they work, why they don't work? Um, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest with you. I don't, th I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's probably better, like, it's probably better to watch a large diversity of films than to just obsess over one particular film. Uh, speaking do of you, that, do you watch, do you, like, some films over and over again? Um, do you consider yourself, like, a movie uh, a movie hipster? Um, because I, I, was, I, I was watching a lot of the Marvel movies, a lot of the, uh, like, the superhero movies, and then I went to, like, an intellectual movie with, with a friend that I, from New York City, and you know what? I think I like like the intellectual, well well told stories better. But I think I think like like the the uh, like like the pop culture movies, like like um, you know, are fun popcorn clips. You go you go you spend time with your family. You eat some popcorn. You watch a movie, and I think that's I think that's a lot of fun, and a lot of people love that, and that that's great. Um, but I, I sometimes I think like the movies that really make you think, that give you like an existential awakening. That's kind of cool too, you know. There's a place in the world for both types of film. 
I do prefer the films that give you something to think of long after the film's ended, but not all of those are highbrow and not all highbrow films are like that. I don't watch that many films. I used to. I went through a phase when I was in uni when I was watching, like I watched every uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie. Did you watch any Hitchcock? No. What 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 is Alfred Hitchcock and what what is what is what is, what is his genre? Like uh, what, what suspense is... films. Uh, he did Psycho. You must have heard of Psycho yeah. with the shower scene and uh, the birds with killer birds which is kind of strange uh what other famous films has he done he's done vertigo uh rearview mirror like lots of suspense films uh thrillers uh he did rebecca which is also kind of suspenseful uh, that that sort of thing um but yeah uh, i just got really into him and i just watched all his films and just binged them all and i did something similar with a very different type of director kevin smith who did clerks and mall rats and chasing amy and stuff like that have you, have you ever like got really into a director and just binged all of their stuff um i well, my, my, well I, I know my dad's really into the, the marvel like dc superhero genre and you know he, I, I would see him on the weekends and he would kind of, you know, like rent all the movies. I, I mean, I, I know it's kind of like a little bit like, but he was really into it. I got really into it. Um, so, I mean, it's fun, but yeah, nothing. It's something nothing, you can do with your dad, I guess. Right. It, not, nothing really like intellectual wise. I, I mean, maybe someday I will, um, you know, like find some good director and get into like really intellectual movies. But, There's a lot of people who try and be super intellectual about comic books, and it, it always comes off as very strange. Like, they'll really overanalyze all the philosophical themes and socio-political implications of the Hulk, or what have you. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. Do you, do you read the comic books as well, or just uh, the movies? Um, um, no, I don't really read the comic books. Actually, this is a funny joke. Um, yeah, apparently Edward Norton was supposed to be like the original Hulk in the MCU. And like, he was like really pretentious about it. He wanted like this Dark Hulk trilogy, like the Batman trilogy. And um, Hulk is not a character for Dark Star. Well, actually, he kind of is, according to the people who overanalyze it. They're all like, oh, he's just like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's like classical literature, no, it isn't. It's just a big green man punching things. And, and, and like, like my dad says, he, like Edward Norton wanted like to explore the psychology, like the psychology behind the Hulk. And he says, what you have, what, what they needed to say to Edward Norton. Edward Norton, all it boils down to is Hulk smash. That's all you need to know for this character. Hulk smash. <laughs> it's a joke, but he like, is Norton like, the one who made the uh, 2003 film. Um, no, I think that was something Ang Lee. Ang Lee, uh, yeah, that was it. Um, yeah, uh, he, he was. Uh, Edward Norton was uh, in Fight Club, which was another interesting movie. Um, did you ever see that? Yeah, of course I've seen Fight Club with Meatloaf in it. Uh, the <laughs> musician Meatloaf, right? Uh, you listen to any Meatloaf or um, classic rock? I, th I, I think I'm Bad Out of Hell or whatever. I, yeah. no, I'm not really a big Meatloaf fan, but yeah, he was in the movie. Yeah, my mum used to love Meatloaf. She went to see him at a concert and he had a heart attack. When she <laughs> went to the concert, bringing bad luck with her. Um... Uh, what microphone do you have? Is it just your headphones, Mike? Or... Um, snowball, snowball Ice. Ah, I also have a snowball. Which one do you use? Uh, I use the blue snowball, just the circle. I got a blue Yeti, but it's just too sensitive. It's too good for me. I can't figure out how to get it to not pick up every little sound in the room. Right. So I use the uh, snowball instead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what time is it over in England right now? It is half seven. It's, it's about seven? Uh, half past seven. Half even. past seven, so 7.30. Yeah, it's 2.30 yep. here. All right, I, 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 do, you, do, you want to wrap, do you have any more questions or do you, want, do you have anything else you'd like to talk about or do you want to wrap up? No, I'm perfectly fine. It's been a nice conversation. Yeah, it's been a nice conversation, Paul. I know you've been commenting on my channel for some time, and thank you for doing that. It's it's great to finally get to see your face, and I, I love I love your um I love your your posts. I, we're gonna I'm gonna turn off recording in a second. I'll turn off recording now. And we'll, we'll we'll wrap up. But you don't sure. mind if I post this on YouTube, right? See ya. No, I do not mind at all. Okay, I'm gonna post this, and I'm gonna stop.